She's super busy, but I'd love to know what, uh, why it was important for you to visit some music schools around the country, and, uh, including Dime. Yeah, well, um, I mean, I've, of course, I started off like every other artist, um, you know, aspiring to, to do this for a living and um, kind of being told pretty much my whole life that it wasn't something that was plausible or possible. Um, and so now that I'm on the other end of it and I've made it to the other side, I think it's so important to be able to talk to a bunch of people who want to do the same thing as me and kind of give them any insight into how I got started or any help that they might need or want, I guess. Absolutely. Um, I was sort of curious too about your earliest sort of turning point of when you wanted to turn your gift um, into uh, a career or to pursue it and what what machinations did you sort of go through to make this happen? Yeah, um, that's a tough question because I think it was kind of a dream of mine for a long time but when you're a kid I don't think you can separate the difference between reality and just like a pipe dream that's fun and exciting and um, so I don't really know when the shift happened. I, th I think once I um, started high school, I started to take it a bit more seriously. And once I started reaching the end of high school and realizing, you know, once I had to start like applying for university and college, that there was nothing else that I wanted to do or nothing that I felt like I was good enough at, that's when I kind of realized, okay, I think this is this is my plan A for sure. Yeah. Um, I heard that you suffered from stage fright pretty early on. Mm, definitely. What yeah. did you do to confront that? And is that something you still struggle with, even though you've performed for thousands, millions? Yeah. <laughs> um, well, it's definitely something I still struggle with. I think now it's kind of transitioned from stage fright to just good nerves that you can channel into adrenaline, which is good. Um, but that took a long time. Uh, I. I guess what I did was start up a YouTube channel um, so I could start posting covers in the comfort of my own room by myself without having to be in front of a live audience yet. And that was my way to like dip my toe into that world. And then at, like, after about two or three years of doing that, I just kind of got the courage to start singing in front of people, whether it was like at my school talent shows or random little cafes and bars and stuff that I was probably too young to be in anyway, but <laughs> just okay. playing there and you know, just just getting out there, even if it was terrifying and even if the show was horrible or my set was awful, just just playing and playing and playing until you get used to it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, a lot has changed, right? Since 2015's yeah. debut, you know it all. Yeah. Um, you actually wrote every song on The Paints of Growing, is that correct? I did, yeah. What was that process like and what made you feel prepared to sort of take it on? Um, well, I think growing up, I always just assumed that everybody wrote their own songs. I just, that's I where my too. brain went. They yeah, don't. I think a lot of they us really probably don't. did. They don't, yeah, especially <laughs> in the pop world. Um, so, but growing up, since I thought that, I thought, okay, well, if I want to be a singer, like, I really want to be a good songwriter as well. So that's always been a dream of mine. And I totally understand that a lot of people who aspire to be singers um, aren't necessarily interested in the writing aspect, because sure. that's a whole skill and a whole thing in itself, um, but I've always wanted to do both. And so um, when I did my first album, I was really young and I was just kind of figuring out how to be a songwriter. So I had a writing partner to help me out and he, I kind of used him as my crutch or like my little like cone in the road in case I veered right. off. Um, but th on this album, I didn't want to rely on anybody. I didn't want to have to lean on a, on a person, especially like an older man that was like older than me. He's great, but I just felt like I want to do this as a young woman myself and just tell my own story 100%. Um, that way the fans know that every single word is, is my own and every melody is my own. And it just, I don't know. And it kind of helped me. It challenged me a lot. And it helped me just become a better songwriter. Yeah, absolutely. Um, was there a specific moment that inspired this this need to sort of to write? Or was it more of a buildup of emotions? Clearly a lot had changed since you were, you know, co-writing. Mm. Um, I don't know. I think it was... A mix of me just always wanting to do that or always wanting to have at least one project that was all me. Although I think since I've done it, I, I think I'm going to keep doing it that way. Um, but on the other end, I don't know. I think when people just see a young woman in the industry, it's uh, very difficult for people to believe that you're responsible for your own success, unfortunately. And I would get a lot of like, well, who do you owe that to? Or did you really do this? Or, well, someone else's name is on it, so they clearly did everything, you know? And it, that was frustrating, and I wanted to prove like, I can do this, not only to myself, but to everybody else that was kind of saying that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, 
So actually, everyone here was given a card um, on their seat um, where you've invited everyone to sort of share their growing pains. Yeah, um, yeah. I wrote self-doubt, and I would love to know um, some of the growing pains that you address on this record. Oh, yeah, sure. There are a lot of them. <laughs> uh, Fifteen of them, to be exact, if we're talking every song. Um, but I'd say self-doubt self is definitely one of them. Um, I just put out a song yesterday, or technically today. Is it the fifth it's today? today, you today yeah, or well, last night slash today <laughs> at midnight. Um, which is essentially about my, my self-doubt and my, my own insecurities that I'm trying very hard to let go of um, and remind myself that I'm okay without. Um, so that's been a huge thing. But also just... I think just the transition from being a teenager into being an adult and having to figure yourself out, and in my case particularly, having to figure myself out in a world that's um, very demanding and very consuming and uh, kind of, I guess, in a world that kind of tries to make you something or make you the complete opposite of what you are. So trying to find who you are in that world is uh, a challenge, like a daily kind of battle to be like, no, this is this, this is that, and I am this without music. Cause for a while, like I was so consumed by music, and I work every single day, so it's hard to re like remind yourself of who you are outside of that. You know, like I'm not just Alessia Cara. Like, what do I like to do outside of this, or right. you know, what are my personal goals, things like that. And having been so young when you you know entered music, probably uh, losing part of your adolescence in the shuffle of this adult world, I would think. A little bit, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thankfully, I was 18, so I had it was like just near the end of my uh, teenage years. I don't know what I would have done if I had started at like 15. But still, like 18, 19, 20, there's still a huge change there and like a lot of stuff you have to figure out. So having to do that among this, like, I don't know, this world is, is a little bit difficult. Um, did your, uh, if you didn't know, she won a Grammy this year? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. You've been living under a rock if you didn't know that. Um, I'm sort of curious to know, did that Grammy win put any pressure on the new record? Did it change your expectations at all for, for your, your next output? Um, not necessarily because um, the album, I had pretty much written the album uh, like before, before I won, so it's not like I had to go into it like making the second album after and having that pressure of like, oh, Grammy. But also, I don't know, I try not to think of it that way. Um, it's it a great acknowledgement and it's not lost on me that it's an amazing, amazing thing. But I, I try not to put too much pressure on myself. Although there is like the best new artist curse thing that's been going around. So I guess I got to prove that it's Wait, what's not that? real. I don't know about that. Oh, you haven't heard? It's like, no. they say that once you win best new artist, like they're, you're cursed you're done. and then your career is done. Yeah. Oh, that's not going to happen. I hope not. No. Jeez. <laughs> Had a good run, I guess. <laughs> yep. Well, this is it. <laughs> yeah, um, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> um, your breakout hit here, um, that was sort of like became the anti-party anthem, right? Yeah. Um, then your amazing uh, collaboration with Logic tackled suicide prevention. Um, and then Scars, you're beautiful. It sort of became the Christina Aguilera-esque uh, beautiful for our generation. Yeah, it's cool. Um, so you are sort of a champion for the underdog, right? Oh, um, and how do your fans respond to this? Do you have people telling you and messaging you about how they've impact how you've impacted them? Yeah, um, which is unbelievable because I mean, for me initially when I wrote these songs, obviously with the exception of one eight hundred, which is not my song, I just wrote my verse. But with the other songs, I was honestly just venting, like based off of experience and like observation in my own life. I didn't even know if anyone was gonna hear those songs. So it wasn't my initial intention to be like, I'm gonna speak for the underdogs. I just felt like I believed in the songs and I hoped that somebody would hear them and feel something, but right. you never know, right? Um, so it's kind of just interesting and overwhelming in a good way that I've been kind of put into this place of being that like advocate for, for underdogs. It's great. I mean, it's, it's a really good, there, if there's a box to be put into, I think that's a great one, so. Yeah, and to use your platform for good and to inspire others. Yeah, that of wasn't necessarily what you set out to do, but it's sort of, uh, is there a pressure to sort of keep that up now? Um, I mean, in a way, in a way, but I think my fans are, of course, my fans because of, I, I'm assuming, like some of the, the positive things that I have to say, but I think they're also my fans because they know that I'm not perfect and that I'm honest. And so as long as I continue making honest music, whether that is like a preachy, like, 
socially conscious song or even just a song about love or a song about being sad or things like that. I think that's why they relate is because I'm honest, not necessarily because I'm this perfect positive person because I'm not and pretty sure they're, they're aware of that. So <laughs> there's not too much pressure. Um, because you write from such a personal place, um, is there a fear of being too vulnerable? Um, like, is there a vetting process for what experiences or feelings you keep to yourself and what you put into song? Um, yeah, and I think, I mean, the beauty of being a songwriter is just being able to choose, pick and choose, like, what you want people to hear and what you want to keep to yourself, you know? And I can write songs that nobody will ever hear, and it's, like, selfish enough for me that I can just get it out of my system, but, right. you know, if I feel like it's not beneficial to anybody or if it's too personal, then I, I won't release it. And I definitely have songs that I felt were just too too personal for this album that I might release in the future, I don't know. But um, I also think that vulnerability is a good thing. I think right. um, there's, like, a strange thing around vulnerability where we're made to feel like it's a weak thing or, right. you know, and it does feel kind of naked, I'm not gonna lie, because I'm, I'm talking very specifically on this record, but um, I think it's a good thing, and I think more people will feel connected that way. Yeah, um, so we talked about the, we're, we're not gonna pay any attention to that brand new uh, artist winning curse, um, <laughs> but Hopefully. at 22 you've accomplished so many amazing things. Is How do you define success now, and, and where do you go from here? Good question. Um, well, I, I don't want to see like the an, an award or an accolade as like the end all be all because yeah. that would be horrible to just be like, all right, well, I'm done. Yeah. You know, there's there's so much more that I that I want to do, and um, I don't even know. I guess I define success as just being happy with what I do, and um, personally, just having music that people remember. And I guess we'll never know until I'm dead if that worked out or not. <laughs> but <laughs> I hope years from now, people will just remember what I had to say and that. The things that mean a lot to me just transcend through the years. Yeah. Hi, Alessia. Uh, I would like to say thank you for coming out. Uh, my name is George. I'm a third year songwriter here at Don. Amazing. And I, thanks. Uh, I would like to ask how much of a part do your parents play in your life? And um, how does it affect your songwriting? Good question. Um, they play a very large role in my life. I'm really close with my parents. I grew up in a um, very close Italian family mm -hmm. of just four of us. So um, I think it's just default in an Italian family that you have to be close with them. Yes. Um, and they've been a huge, huge part in not only the beginning of me starting music and feeling confident in myself. Like my mom was the one who um, was pushing me to start my YouTube channel because she knew how much I wanted to do it. and. She would like put me on the spot at family gatherings to sing in front of people because she knew it would help me. So things like that. Um, and my dad travels with me still um, on and off, like on tour, he'll, he'll, he'll come and help out. And they've just been, I don't know, we're just really, really close. And I think part of that is because none of us were very close to the industry. We had no idea what any of it was about. So it started off just being protective, um, but it's great. I think they're, they play a huge role in everything that I do, and I have a bunch of songs, um, even on this album, where I where I talk about them. That's awesome. Thanks. Thank you. Check one. Oh. Hi. Um, Hello. My name is Alex Zist. I'm a 2018 Dime graduate. Yeah. Um, yes. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I'm also a 20 year old, 21 year old singer songwriter producer. Can't wait to hopefully work with you one day. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> you uh, made a debut album in 2015. How do you think your music has grown since then, and where do you aspire to be three years from now musically? Good question. Um, first half of that, I guess. Um, I think I've just grown in many ways, um, not only just like technique wise, I think I'm just better as a songwriter, but I also think I'm allowing myself to be more vulnerable and, and talk about myself in ways that I haven't necessarily done before. Um, my first album was a lot of like yous. I was talking to the audience like with scars, like you don't have to change a thing, you, she, he. I never really talked about me. Um, and I think on this album for the first time, I say I a lot more than I mm -hmm. have. Um, which is really different for me, and again, it feels kind of naked and, and strange, but it's it was really good, I think, both for me and for the listener, because they can get some insight into who I am and hopefully feel even more connected to me, because they know that there's someone who's like feeling probably the exact same things that they are. Um, and then, I guess to answer your second question, um, I hope to just keep being me, but at the same time keep growing, and maybe hopefully just write, just continue writing honest music that's that's honestly my goal um you said you're a producer that's amazing i would love to learn how to produce maybe you could teach me 
Let's do it. <laughs> that, that would be great in three years. I've always wanted to produce my own album, too. I produced a couple songs on this album, but I would love to do a whole record you by myself. You have plenty of time. Hopefully. <laughs> hopefully. Hi, my name's Hi. Terry. Um, I'm a vocalist here at Dime. Awesome. Um, what has been your biggest stepping stone like throughout your career? What was like the biggest thing to launch you to where you are right now? Good question. I feel like there have been a few things, to be honest. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily one thing, but I will say um, I got to tour with Coldplay. Um, was it two years ago? Was it two years ago already? Oh my goodness. <laughs> two years ago, um, we did Europe with them and uh, North America with them. And that not only put me in front of thousands and thousands of people, which taught me how to be a better performer and just to be in front of that many people at once, but it taught me so, so much about everything, just like watching them every night. And I don't know, I think like that experience, maybe just personally, is a was a huge, huge stepping stone um, for so many different reasons. I don't know if it necessarily helped like launch me anywhere. I think a lot of people discovered me from from doing that those shows, yeah. um, but it just taught me so much about myself as a performer and what I wanted to do and just getting to like watch the band play and talk to them and get all their wisdom because they have a lot of it, apparently. Um, that was, I think for me, a personal stepping stone, if that makes sense. Probably learning what you're capable of too, right? Yeah, and sort definitely. of trusting that. Definitely, yeah, because you, you're playing in front of crowds that have no idea who you are, most likely, right. and they're not there for you. No. So having to win over a crowd and learning how to do that and learning to not get it discouraged if they're just like, Staring at you, Looking you know. At their phones. Yeah, it's 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 a whole. It teaches you a lot. Yeah. Back here. Hi. Hi. I'm Hi. Jeff. I'm a second year songwriter. Thanks a lot for being here today. Oh, thank you. So I was wondering what the process was like being featured on the Logic song. Like, how did you get in that position? What was it like recording? And what did it feel like after the song was released? Yeah. Um, lots of feelings throughout. Um, so I've been listening to Logic for a very long time, like since his early mixtapes and stuff. So um, I've been a fan of his forever and um, we're actually signed to the same label. So we met through a label thing, I believe, or I don't even remember exactly how we met, but anyways, we exchanged phone numbers and one day I was just in New York and he called me. He was like, hey, you know, I have this new album, it's called Everybody, and he explained the whole concept of this album, being like, every song is a different perspective of a different character. And he brought up the 1-800 song, um, uh, my ver where my verse was, it was just like an empty instrumental, and he said, I really want to do this song, I want to you know, talk about suicide prevention and just help people out and speak from the perspective of someone who is depressed and you know, maybe like a young kid, and I would love for your verse to be like an uplifting part and maybe like on the other end of the hotline or something, and I was like, oh my gosh, a thousand percent. I thought the concept was so beautiful of just really? the whole album. I didn't even know the song was gonna be a single. I thought it was just gonna be on the album, and I was in, in because I, thought it was such a beautiful concept. Um, so I wrote my verse that week, recorded it, didn't even know Khalid was gonna be on it. And then of course the aftermath of all of that um, was just so amazing. Uh, like I think the statistics were like the the number of, yeah, it went up. Yeah, the calls went up, and I mean, we, I still get messages every single day, and people coming up to me, telling me that that song helped them, and even just being a small part of that is extremely fulfilling and amazing. And again, like you hope that songs will help people, but it's not until you see them face to face and hear the actual stories that you you realize that music really, really does have an effect on people, and that's why it's so precious and so important to to make sure that you believe in what you're saying, because people will hear it, and there are people listening. Yeah and they, they really take it in, so, yeah. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Stephanie Belcher. Uh, I am Oh, hi, sorry, I, I, was, I, I, I didn't know here. where to look. Sorry, I'm That's here okay, now. no, no, it's my fault. Uh, my name is Stephanie Belcher. I am the area coordinator department head for the industry studies department here. So I wanna thank you for, first of all, thank you for everything but the 1-800 song. It really, really changes people's lives, so oh, thank, thank you so you. much. Um, I heard your song here on CBC Radio months and months before it was released in the U.S. Really? or before it got played. Yeah. So being able to get CBC2 on the air here is something that I think is amazing about living so close to Canada. Mm -hmm. So growing up in Canada and then coming to the U.S. and having your career here, have you noticed any major differences between the industry there and the industry here? Is there anything that we can learn from each other? 
That's a really good question. I don't know if I have an answer. Um, let me think. That's really interesting. Is it different? You think it's different? How would you say it's different, Andres? Get him a mic. Let's discuss. Because like, I, I, it feels different, but I wouldn't know how to explain how it's different, I guess. Hey. <laughs> hey. This, is my, this is my road manager, Andres. Yeah, definitely. No, I think that you know both markets have a lot of things that are beneficial, but I think that Canada has a very good system of supporting. Oh yeah, definitely. Of supporting, you know, the artists that are coming up. They have a very good structure of grants for artists mm -hmm. and to be able to tour around the country. They have a lot of band houses where the bands can stay, and um, you know, and start getting the experience that Alessia was mentioning previously. So, well, in management, uh, we do use it a lot for a lot of the artists that we're developing, and it makes a huge difference. They give a lot of support also for creating content, creating videos. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's something that Canada does very well, and I think that the U.S. should definitely uh, be using more. Especially up and coming that may not have the funds to you know, be able to create videos or go on tour and stuff. So that support on that end, even for songwriters. As a songwriter, the grants are amazing, and they really give you a, a great push. So I don't know if that's a thing here, if that's prominent here, but it should be, because it's very, very helpful for up-and-coming artists and stuff. Awesome, thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, Andres. <laughs> right over here. Hi, um, my name is Sarah. It's so great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, first, I want to thank you for being yourself and being so unapologetically you. Um, it's so refreshing in these day and age, so thank you for that as well. It's been thank incredible you. to watch you grow as an artist from the inception of here until now. Um, so my question is, how do you prevent the fear of rejection from you know, allowing you to take more risks and to take more swings? Good question. Um, that's tough, um, especially for someone like me who's constantly anxious and self-doubting all the time. And um, I think in this industry, when you're young and up and coming, unfortunately, it's not always gonna be easy. I mean, bless you if it is, but for me, it was not, and I think for a lot of young artists, it's not easy, and you're gonna have to be told no a bunch of times before you get the one yes that counts. Um, I was told like by so many different labels that I was like too shy to be anything, that I am not a solo artist, that I belong in a band, like Paramore was the quote, direct quote, yeah. Um, so yeah, like I've left meetings crying, just feeling horrible, and thought like no one was gonna sign me. Um, but I think those no's, rather than just letting them make you like, I guess less confident, just, just remember that there's, it just takes one yes that, that, count, that counts and that matters to get you to where you need to be, or at least for, as a start. So just try not to be too afraid about it. Just remember that, you know, you have something to say and remember what you're trying to say. And remember that no's are just guiding you to, to the right yes, whether it's the yes that you're expecting or the yes that ends up being the better yes for you. Um, and in my case, that's what it was. So I'm really, really grateful, so just, don't worry too much about it. I think you. I think the no's are really helpful, and the rejection is helpful as much as it stings in the beginning, if that makes sense or helps you at all. <laughs> no problem. How you doing? Hi, good. Uh, How really are you? Good to have you here. I'm Nigi. Hi. I'm a year two songwriter. I'm also learning the producer side of things. Amazing. Uh, I really like the song with Logic. It really touched me. It gave me chills. And oh, you, you have good you. content and. You are uh, touching people. I just wanted to share that. And I also want to ask you a question. My question is, um, when you find yourself in a, in a stress high um, state in your mind and in your, in your heart, how do, how do you uh, bring yourself back to a, a minimum and function with mm -hmm. life and the position that you have now? Yeah, that's, it's tough. It's really tough. And that's something that I've struggled with over the last three years. And that, that was kind of like the impetus actually of, of making this album is because I realized through the last three years that I have been bottling stuff up that I wasn't even aware of and it was coming out in other ways and it's so easy to get lost in everything in this industry because it's so quick and you're thinking of a million other people that you stop thinking of yourself um, and so for me I started like using any form of therapy that I could whether it was like literal therapy which I do go to or just talking to people and, and just getting it out, getting it out before it comes out in other ways and not being afraid of, of telling people like, I need a second, you know, and I don't feel comfortable right now or I, I feel really anxious, I just need a minute. Um, 
when to say no and how to say no because yeah again when you're young and uh, being a girl like I think people take no's as like being mean or being hard to work with you know um, but it's so important to, to remember that you are doing something that is is very I guess how do I explain it it's it's very it consumes you um, and I think like life consumes us in general let alone when you're working all the time so I just think like little things, even like doing little breathing techniques. There's this technique that I like to use. It's called the four, seven, eight method, where you um, breathe in for four seconds, hold for seven, breathe out for eight. Um, and that's like as dumb and as stupid as that seems. It really helps me throughout my day. It's just taking taking a second, just being like, I need a minute. Um, remembering to to eat, like or sleep. <laughs> Drink lots of water, like those things that people tell you that our parents used to tell us that we would be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those do help help me stay sane or more sane at least um, among like all of this. Does that help? Yes. I hope so. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Hello. Hey. Hi, Alessia. I'm Ente. I'm the head of songwriting here at Dime. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate the insight you're giving the students. Oh, thank you. Um, I have a really specific question about something that you talked about during the interview, and that's vulnerability. Mm. With the voice majors, we talk a lot about instead of trying to create this build-a-bear type of artistry, to actually be vulnerable on stage. So it's a two-part question. Mm. First... Was that a choice that you made on your own and it just worked or was that something that you had to fight for? And if it was a choice that you made on your own to just be vulnerable, how have you been able to remain in that state so naked on stage? Because obviously your authenticity is what has really made this amazing, the fact that you're so real and you're so normal. How have you maintained that? Thank you, thank you, that was a great question. Um, I hope I answer this correctly. Um, but first of all, yes, it, it was a choice. I made the decision early on to always be honest and, and say what I'm feeling and to, to write my stuff and just to be 100% honest. Um, and I think what keeps me doing that is seeing how many people it affects it becomes so much more rewarding when you know that you were honest. I, I couldn't imagine putting out something that I didn't believe in or something that I just kind of put together and then seeing it affect people and like realizing like I didn't really mean this or having to put up, put up a front every single day. Because this is so 24-7 that it would be so incredibly tiring to have to be somebody else every single day. It is way easier, selfishly, for yourselves and for me to be yourself. And I promise you it is so much more rewarding when something that maybe you were going through that didn't feel the best, but you put out on paper, is affecting people directly in a positive way, like so immensely. It just feels that much better to know that something that you were feeling enough like bravely enough to to write about and talk about um it's like just just helping people um so that's that's what keeps me doing it is just seeing seeing the effect and the direct connection um and just it's just a reminder to keep keep doing those things did that help hi alicia hi i'm a uh, year one vocal major student um hey. my name is fred as an artist i go by versatile i'm a singer and a rapper hey. um cool. For my question, I have something prepared for you. Um, it's a common fact that everyone who climbs towards success has to go through putting in massive levels of grind. Mm. And beyond just grinding, there's a patience built through leaving and entering different parts of your process. For me right now, I feel like I'm in an area where I'm about to step into a new life and I get a lot of mixed feelings that come with that sometimes. Mm. So for you, what was it... Um, what is it internally that kept you balanced throughout your process into your position now? And what keeps you balanced internally right now? Good question. These are very good questions, and I hope that I can answer them in a way that's helpful to you. I'll try my best. Um, me, starting out, um, I mean, it was like three years of, of nothing happening, and then once here came out, it kind of just went from there. So I was thrust into a new life, much like you, because you said it's your first year, right? Yeah, so I can imagine you're probably in this whole new environment and that's definitely very scary. But I, I personally believe that the most uncomfortable things are sometimes the best things for you because they teach you a lot. And although it was uncomfortable for me at first, I think I learned so much about myself and what I'm capable of. And just constantly putting myself and being put into uncomfortable situations it has 
been really, really helpful for me. I mean, in terms of how I stay balanced, again, like I mentioned, just talking about things, um, not being afraid to say yes or no, um, and just taking seconds to process everything and make sure that I'm still doing what I wanted to do when I started out and that I haven't lost myself. Um, and just kind of where I know, like, that I know where I'm, where I'm going or where I'm trying to go. And having that tunnel vision of just knowing, like, this is where I was, here's where I am, and here's where I want to go. And being conscious of all those things has been a huge help for me because it just, it keeps you focused and definitely balanced. So, yeah. All those self-check-ins, right? Yeah, you need to do that once in a while because life goes by so fast. And, I mean, I'm sure school, like, it goes by so fast. And then before you know it, it's over. And you're like, wait, what did I do? You, you kind of, like, lose it all. So just have those... Like you said, check ins with yourself and make sure that you're that you're okay. What do you need if you're not okay? Um, and just yeah, just make sure you know where you're headed and where you are, and like being present, as cheesy as that sounds, is a is a good important thing because life is very very short. Alicia, hello. Hi, my name is Jasmine Granger. I'm a first year vocal student. Um, I first off, sorry, to say, uh, I can't even get my words right now. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you. I can't. I'm talking to you Thank right you. now. Thank <laughs> you. Um, but mine is more of like a thank you. Um, I appreciate that you do remain yourself and you have not allowed the industry to change who you are. And I think that is so admiring because a lot of people, they say, okay, well, I'm not going to let the industry change me. And they do. But you have not. And I appreciate that. And I also appreciate that as an artist, you use your platform to teach positive messages to like younger people. And you don't just you know get up there and talk mess. You actually touch people with your music, and I, I really appreciate that. So Thank you. Um, my question to you is, I know you were mentioning the record labels. Mm. So as an artist, how do you know when you've actually found a record label that you would actually want to work with? Mm. That's trusting. Like. Good question. Um, well, for me, um, I think I kind of knew. Well, I'm, I'm signed to, to Def Jam, and for me, I think they were the one label that first of all seemed excited about me, which is very important. You want a label that's excited more than anything. You like sometimes you have labels that'll offer you a lot of money, and you'll think that that's what excitement means, but that's not what excitement means. I think they have to believe in you. And to me, because I went in with my music already and with stating exactly who I am and who I'm not, and they still wanted to sign me, that proved that they were excited about the artist that I was and that they weren't prepared to mold me into anything else. So I'd say before you start going to labels, um, make sure that you're developed as an artist and make sure you go in there knowing exactly who you are. Um, and don't be afraid to say no if they tell you, like, we don't agree with that. Don't feel like, okay, well, this is my only chance to be signed, let me just do it, because you can't take that back. Don't be afraid to say no, this is not who I am. And I've done that, I've done that to labels who have like the the one who said that I should be in a band? I was like, no, sorry, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. So and I'm a lot happier that way because I think the right the right people. It's kind of like a relationship. Like you gotta wait for the right one to come along. It's like the whole phrase like take me as I am or whatever, whatever that phrase is. Um, so yeah, I think that's how you know is when you go in there already developed, knowing who you are. Maybe go in with some songs already, so they don't have to be like, okay, well, what songs do we gotta give her? You know, or like like if you already have a set plan on who you are and you're adamant about that and they still are excited about you, I think that's that's when you know you found the right fit. Hi, um, my name is Christian. Uh, I'm Hi. A vocal, oh. <laughs> uh, I'm a vocal major, it's my first year. Uh, well, first, thank you for gracing us with your presence. Oh my um, God, <laughs> thank you, I appreciate it, it makes me feel very cool. And I have, um, <laughs> Two questions, if that's okay with you. Yeah, of course. Uh, first question is about here, and what was the process like to get it, not just like on the radio, but like get it heard and get it noticed and get yourself noticed along with the song? And the second question is, are there any current artists that not much make an impact in your life, but kind of like you look up to, and, and if that makes sense? Yeah. Yeah, um, which one should I answer first? Let me see. Um, I'll do the, okay, so in terms of current artists, I listen to a lot of different music for a lot of different reasons. Um, I mean, growing up, I, I loved Amy Winehouse and Pink, Lauryn Hill, Erica Badu, all these just like really strong women that were imperfect and like 
weren't technically like you know you know how the, like there's like those pop diva singers that are just like reached yeah that have this range and I never had that range so I always gravitated towards more like raw singers that like didn't always sing perfectly but like could sing the hell out of anything and yeah and just like mesmerize people and and that's who like I, who I still listen to and I I love like songwriters like John Mayer and um, there's a band called Big Thief the lead you love Big Thief? I love Big Thief so much too. Adrian Lanker is amazing. She's a phenomenal songwriter, and I always like just look to to her music and Paramore. Not to to make another that label reference, but um, I love Paramore. Haley Williams is another idol of mine. Um, and After Laughter was a huge huge influence on me through making this this album. Um, and then for the here question, that was an interesting one um, because I was already signed to Def Jam. And uh, when it came time to, to release a single, not to put anyone down, because Def Jam's great, but um, they, they didn't want Here to be the single. And I remember having to go in there and be like, please, like, can we is there anything that I can do to just get this song out first? And so they didn't want to release it like as a big single, so they're just like, all right, just put it on SoundCloud. And I was like, okay, yeah. And so I did that, and it turns out in this day and age, people decide, what they like, um, which is a great advantage for us because it's not so much up to the men in the suits anymore and it's more about the people who are consuming the music, which is so beautiful and that, that kind of gave me the leverage to be like, see, I told you, now can I just like go to radio and see if anybody would play it? And the radio thing was a whole other thing. I remember being in this tiny little car with two label reps from Def Jam with my guitar on my back um, and like going to three or four different cities in a day singing for every radio station, like playing the song and being like, please, this is who I am. I believe in the song. Like if you could just give it a couple spins, if you like it, like, you know, doing it old school and just like showing people who I am, going, meeting them face to face. And that was really helpful um, because I think it makes people remember you. And if you, if what I've found is if you explain what your music is about and explain who you are, then people will be more connected rather than like a label just sending them a song and being like, play this. Because here was very different and it was it was a risk to take and I understand why, um, as my first song, why they were reluctant to do it because it didn't sound like anything. But I think that's the beauty of it and that's why I'm so proud of it is because it, it didn't sound like anything and it was still successful because the people decided that they liked it and that they resonated with it. So. Um, that was the process. So if there's any advice I have on that end is just don't rely on those guys. Just like put stuff out. Use what we have. We have amazing resources nowadays where we can just get anything out there. Use SoundCloud, YouTube, like put stuff out there. You can like my cousin who's not signed, he's like eighteen years old and he just put he made a song in his bedroom and just put it out on on like Spotify. And you could do that. And people are listening. It's crazy. So do that. And then sometimes labels go to people after they have a song and have a following. Like you see it with like so many artists like Daniel Caesar, Billie Eilish, Khalid, like these people built their own following on their own and then got signed or got labels attention. So I'd say just do it that way. And we'll discuss our big dreams, how we plan to take over the planet. So why did